Ladies and gentlemen, this is TVP World. You're watching another edition of Break the Fake, where we debunk fake news and combat false narratives. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and let's get rolling. On Saturday night, the international community has been left in a daze, especially reading the news websites, because it seemed that the situation could not deteriorate any further in the Middle East. But this isn't the first time that geopolitics has shown us that it's never so bad that it can't get any worse. The ballistic missiles launched from Iran were mostly shot down, aside from the handful that managed to penetrate Israeli air defense and strike the Navatima Air Base. The installation was not significantly damaged and remained operational despite the strike. And to add insult to injury, the Israelis have come out saying that they rather expected Iranian ordnance to be more precise. The state of affairs following the Iranian attack on Israel is as follows. One side predictably claimed that all incoming missiles were intercepted, while the other said that all expected targets have been successfully hit. To collaborate these claims, Tehran published pictures. The problem is that they were pictures of an old fire in Texas. So like a bar brawl, we're expecting everyone to disperse and go home, nurse their respective wounds, and promptly forget about the whole thing. After all, Iran claims that it has announced its intention to Washington, going so far as to say that the Wall Street Journal wrote about it, so there is no way that Israel did not know about it. The situation is highly complex, with twists and turns that defy simple explanation, although some may hold on to the hope that peace is just a phone call away. The reality might not be that straightforward. What's going on with the world? What's going on? Everybody's fighting. Russia, Ukraine, Israel, the Middle East is blowing up. Everything's blowing up. China's going to be next with Taiwan because of weakness. China's going to be next. What's going on? He said, bring Donald Trump back as president and it'll all stop. It'll all stop. So while we wait for Trump to make relevant phone calls, let's try to make heads and tails out of this whole hullabaloo. First and foremost, why did Iran launch missiles from its own soil? For years, the Ayatollahs have used their proxies for this purpose, including Hamas, the Lebanese Hezbollah, the Houthi in Yemen, and Shiite militias in Iraq and Syria. While it might be conceived as a signal of Tehran being open to negotiations with Israel, it could also be read as a calculated effort, a part of a strategy looking to pin the blame for the deteriorating situation in the region on Israel. The regime in Tehran, after all, is well aware that a mass attack on Israel put the Netanyahu government on the spot when it comes to an armed response. Consequently, this hidden run on part of Tehran might be an attempt on the regime's part to devise an alibi. Now, one thing that warrants particular attention, however, is that the ordnance used by Iran to attack Israel were and are still offered to Russia by Tehran. Let's not forget that these same weapons are being used day in and day out against civilian infrastructures in Ukraine, and that Russia is bent on exploiting every instance of geopolitical instability to slash Western aid to Ukraine and draw public attention away from the embattled country. We should also not forget that China, in its dove of peace spiel as Beijing, was responsible for the normalization of these ties between Riyadh and Tehran. The alliance between the Saudi, Iran, China, and Russia will likely spell the end of the peace in the Middle East as we know it. Meanwhile, in the Russian city of Orenburg, almost 4,000 houses remain in the flooding zones, says the country's Ministry of Emergency Situations. On Sunday, the water levels in the Euro River reached nearly 12 meters. Let's take a look at what the Great Russia looks like right now. It looks like even the buildings are piloting in the Russian Empire. If we were more sarcastically inclined here at uh, Break the Fake, we'd put on our best uh, David Edinburgh voice and try to spin a story about houses migrating to warmer regions, but we won't make fun of other people's misfortunes. The flaying story, however, doesn't end in Orenburg. In Tomsk, the situation is near critical, and the Russian media is reporting that Novosibirsk region is not faring any better. 
According to propaganda sources, water levels in the Tobol River in Kurgan shot up almost a meter and a half overnight to reach over six meters. In Tomsk, the most recent data shows the water level at over eight and a half meters, leaving 30 centimeters to critical level. Also in Tomsk, the river washed away a piece of embankment near one of the bridges, while the number of houses currently underwater is 138. Let's take a look. So now you might be wondering how Russia is dealing with all of the flooding. Are emergency services working overtime to save homes from water? Are evacuation plans drawn up and implemented? Housing set up for evacuees? Maybe a public fund to disperse aid for people affected by the disaster? Well, none of the above. You folks ready? In order to fight the flooding, priests were flown around the flooded areas along with icons of Mary, the mother of Jesus. But hey, it seems like the Russian public is not exactly worried about the flooding and it seems to believe that the Americans have it worse off at home. Why? Because of brownouts, water supply issues, subway trains standing unused, and endless uh, road accidents. Ну, подводные лодки-то у них без конца, говорю, сталкиваются. Да они водить Друг не умеют. Друг с другом, говорю. И у них уже, они старые. Наши подводные лодки вообще бесшумные. И и практически это... даже уловить не могут их. Этот. И лезут, и лезут везде. Надоели да, уже. Да, Ой, точно. А в Вашингтоне, в центре, читай, Америки, что да, творится да, с метро, да. девочки? Но из это нос... мрак какой-то. Из нос составов, смотрите. Там всего, я не знаю, как там люди будут... 60 процентов, я слышала, ну, да? Больше половины. Так я это в Вашингтоне, в столице? Да, 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 да. да. За, за то, что интересно, у нас Собянин, что в Москве сделал? Сколько мы по метро посол? Какие ну, скоростные? Он, сука, пусть едут к нашему и учатся, как это все это делать. Они летят куда, не надо ему. Нет, они к нам хотят в лес. Ну, я говорю, пусть Нет. у себя там Нет, наведут Вашингтон, хоть порядок. Нет, Вашингтон, столица. Столица, Позорище, да. да. Куда Позорище, хоть порядок у себя? Пусть, пусть. Да. Люди мучаются да. там, ездят да. на чем? На да. корытах. Скоро они вообще, говорю, будут бояться в метро заходить даже себе. У ну, них там и вода течет, метро. и свет отключается вот. постоянно. И поезда у них эти, вот, говорю, вагоны стоят. Ну, и аварии бесконечные. Так это же не безопасно, Нет, что? конечно. Ну что, если у нас люди садятся в метро в Москве, они же даже и не думают, а вот что да. а что-то что может случиться. А там сейчас зашел, а потом и... подумает, что не выпал. И именно что именно в Вашингтоне, ну, это страшно, вот, Вашингтон, центр, столица, блин, Америки. Да, они вот да, это да, Зато он, туда... Well, kudos to the Russians, apparently, for not having similar road accident numbers, but we don't actually think the figures are a direct result of policy and prevention measures. It's like the old Soviet joke never died. It's 2024, and the Russians still would rather point out the shortcomings of others than to fix their own. And with that, we conclude this edition of Break the Fake. But for more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.